Confucianism and Taoism are the indigenous philosophies and religions of China. While Confucianism provided the philosophical framework for the applied ethics, education, as well as the social-political system during imperial China, the philosophical Taoism provided the theoretical framework for the technological practices, such as medicine, engineering, and agriculture, as well as the political and military practices. Many of the key concepts from these two philosophical schools are an integral part of the everyday Chinese language. The situation has changed substantially in modern China, but the philosophical frameworks and their concepts still play a significant role in contemporary China. These are common knowledge among the scholars who read and write in Chinese. But many native Chinese speakers are not aware of them, just like we might not be aware of the air we breathe in unless someone pointed out. And it is also difficult for people who do not read or write in Chinese. As I mentioned in my last video on this series, I would like to do something to help. So today, I'm going to talk about the concept of Taiji. Most people in the West learn about Tai Chi from the popular martial art exercise Tai Chi Quan, or simply known as Tai Chi. But they have little idea about Tai Chi as a philosophical concept. What I'm going to present today is my take of the concept. I'm Dr. Gao, a philosopher specialized in classical Chinese philosophy. I make videos about classical Chinese poetry, philosophy, and medical literature. If you like the content of my videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on these subjects. So if you would like to read original Chinese text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Now, let's go back to the concept of Tai Chi. Tai Chi is made of two characters, Tai and Ji. I have talked about the character Ji in my last video. Here's the link to the video clip of the character Ji. It is an important Taoist concept, but not one in Confucian philosophy. It does not appear in the Analects or Manchus, the two most important Confucian texts. It only appears in Yi Jing, or the Book of Changes, in the concept of Tai Ji, which is the focus of today's talk. Now, let's focus on the character Tai. According to the oldest Chinese dictionary, Shuo Wen Jie Zhi, or discussing articles and explaining characters, Tai was an alternative script of the character Da, or Big, in the Oracle Bang inscription at shown here. It also has an alternative script as the character of Tai. Tai literally means to flow smoothly, and its meaning extends to also mean being connected, being relaxed, or being peaceful and beneficial. When Tai is used in the Book of Changes, it refers to the Tai hexagram as shown here, with three broken lines on top of three straight lines. This is one of the best hexagram you can get. It indicates that whatever you are planning to do, you will be successful. You will get a huge followings and support for your project. If I get this hexagram for my channel, I would be really, really happy. In one of the commentary on Yi Jing or the Book of Change, called the Xi Chi, allegedly compiled by Confucius, Tai Ji acquired philosophical meaning. The following quote is where the phrase of Tai Ji appears. Now, let me read the Chinese text and then translate it character by character. Shi Gu Yi You Tai Ji, Shi Sheng Liang Yi. 
八卦定吉凶，吉凶生大业。Now let me translate it character by character. 是 means this. 故 means reason. E is usually translated as change, as in the title of 易经 or the book of changes. But I interpret it here as hexagram because of the textual context. I take this passage as a description of the divination process. I'll explain my reasons later. 有 literally means to have or to be present. Given the textual context, I translate it as start. 太极 For now, let me leave the phrase of 太极 as it is because I'm going to explore how it is used. In the book of change later, 是 means this. 生 is usually translated as generate or give rise to, but here it refers to what comes after 太极 so I translate it as come. 两 means two. 一 means four. 两 again means two. 一 means four. 生 means come, 四 means four, 相 means symbol, 四 again means four, 相 means symbol, 生 means come, 八 means eight. 卦 refers to either trigram or hexagram, but here it is trigram. 八 again means eight. 卦 means trigram. 定 means predict. 吉 means fortune, 凶 means misfortune. 吉 again means fortune, 凶 means misfortune. 生 means come, 大 means great, 业 means accomplishment. So the four lines can be translated as, because of this, the hexagrams start with 太极 From 太极 comes the two forms, that is. The straight line and the broken line. From the two forms come the four symbols. From the four symbols come the eight trigrams. Using the trigrams, the sages predict whether an action will bring about a fortune or a misfortune. Knowing the fortune or the misfortune of a plan leads to great accomplishment. Here, 太极 is neither defined nor explained, but in the paragraph following this one, there is a passage that might help us to figure out what 太极 might be. A map appeared from the Yellow River, and a diagram appeared from the River Luo. The sages took them as the principles of the world. There are four symbols of changes to show the principles. The commentary explains the hexagram. Has the hexagram can be used to determine the fortunes or misfortune of an action and resolve any doubts. Now let me explain why the Yellow River and the Luo River appeared here. The Yellow River and the Luo River are extremely important in early Chinese civilization. As indicated by the two rivers highlighted in this map in green, this is the reason the early Song and Zhou dynasties were established. You can also see the two rivers in this map, where all the important archaeological sites of the Song and Zhou dynasties were discovered today. According to Chinese mythology. Fu Xi and Nü Wa created a human and human civilization. During Fu Xi's reign, a dragon horse with a map on its back emerged from the Yellow River, and a sacred turtle with a diagram on its shell appeared from the River Luo. Fu Xi devised the initial eight trigrams from this map and the diagram. However, Fu Xi is a mythical figure, and no written history recorded who he was and when he was in reign. The real history of the Book of Changes started with the founding father of the Zhou Dynasty, King Wen Jichang, around the 1150s BC. 
King Wen extended the eight trigrams to sixty-four hexagrams, and the Duke of Zhou Tiban, following his father's footsteps, added the explanations for each of the hexagrams and each line in the hexagrams, and completed the Book of Changes. According to ancient historians such as the Han Dynasty historian Sima Qian, Confucius also compiled seven commentaries to the Book of Changes. Because all these stories are a mix of myth, legend, and histories, you might want to take them with a bit of salt. So, what is Taiji? The following passage from the commentary provides one explanation. Now, let me read the original Chinese text and then translate it character by character. Zi Yue, Fu Yi, Hu Wei Zhe Ye, Fu Yi, Kai Wu, Cheng Wu, Mo Tian Xia Zi Dao, Ru Shi, Er Yi Zhe Ye, Shi Gu, Sheng Ren, Yi Tong Tian Xia Zi Zi, Yi Ding Tian Xia Zi Ye, Yi Duan Tian Xia Zi Yi. Zi means master, Yue means said. Fu has no meaning here. It indicates that a new sentence starts here. Classical Chinese writing system does not have marks for punctuation. Instead, it has a set of characters to indicate the beginning or ending of a sentence. Fu indicates the beginning of a sentence. While、well, ye or zhe ye indicate the end, yi here refers to the hexagram. He wei means what for. Zhe ye indicates the end of this sentence. Fu again indicates the beginning of a new sentence. Yi means hexagram. Kai means analyze. Wu means things. Cheng means accomplish. Wu means undertaking. Mao literally means to cover or represent, so I choose represent. Tian means heaven, Xia means under, Zi means of, Dao means way, Ru means just like, Si means this, Er Yi means no more, no less. Zhe Yi again indicate the end of this sentence. I also add the possessive adjectives. To make the translation easy to understand, so these four lines can be translated as: The master said, "What the hexagrams are for? They help people to analyze things and accomplish their undertakings. They represent the ways of all things under the heaven. They are just this, no more, no less. Shi means this. Gu means." Reason, Sheng Ren means sage, Yi means through, Tong literally means to be connected, as in the phrase of Tong Shang, be connected to trade. It also means one is mentally or spiritually connected with something, as in the phrase of Tong Ling, or connected with spirits, as in the case of psychic medium. So I translate Tong as understand. Tian again means heaven. Xia means under. Zi means of. Zi literally means intention or ambition. So I translate it as go. Yi means through. Ding means determine. Tian means heaven. Xia means under. Zi means of. Ye means undertaking. Yi again means through. Duan literally means to cut off the silk from the loom. It also refers to the judgment whether one has finished the weaving and cut off the silk. Hence, acquired the meaning of making a judgment. So I interpret it as resolve. Tian means heaven. Xia means under. Zi means of. Yi means thought. So these three lines can be translated as: Because of this, the sages, through divination, understand the goals of all the people under the heaven, determine all their undertakings under the heaven, 
and resolve all their doubts under the heaven. So, from these passages, we can infer that the E is the hexagram modeling the observed changes in the human and nature world as well as the divination process. But unlike the ancient divination conducted with the oracle bones, the Book of Changes is not just a method for divination, it also provides observed and accumulated experiences when interpreting the hexagram to predict how things are going to turn out. So, if E is the model for changes, then Tai Ji can be understood as the initial mental or spiritual state before a hexagram was obtained. Now, let's review the paragraph where the concept of Tai Ji is discussed. Therefore, the hexagrams start from Tai Ji. From Tai Ji comes the two forms, that is, the straight line and the broken line. From the two forms come the four symbols. From the four symbols come the eight trigrams. Using the trigrams, the sages decided whether an action will bring about fortune or misfortune. Knowing the fortune or misfortune of a plan lead to great accomplishment. If we interpret this paragraph as a description of a divination process, it can be illustrated by this diagram. Tai Ji is the initial ambiguous state before a divination is performed. By performing the divination technique, one gets some result, and by consulting the commentaries from the Book of Changes, one can predict the possible outcomes of an action. So basically, a divination process is like this. If one throws a coin, one gets two possible outcomes. That is, the yang form or the straight line, and the yin form or the broken line. If one throws a coin twice, there are four different combinations of the straight line and the broken line, representing four possible outcomes. If one throws the coin three times to obtain a trigram, one gets eight trigrams, representing eight outcomes. These actions create the initial eight trigram devised by Fu Xi. If one throws a coin six times, one gets 64 possible outcomes. These are the hexagrams expanded by King Wen. So Tai Ji can be understood as an epistemological concept representing the ambiguous or confused mental or spiritual state before a divination is performed. It was not until the Han Dynasty the concept of Tai Ji started to acquire some ontological connotation to mean the ultimate harmonious state of yin and yang. The concept often appeared in the discussion about maintaining health by the Western Han philosopher Dong Zhongshu. Here is a quote from Dong Zhongshu. The ways of yin and yang are different. They all start from the center, reach their peaks, then stop at the center again. This center is the Taiji of heaven and earth. The next significant contribution to the concept of Taiji was made by a Tang Dynasty scholar official named Kong Yingda. He compiled a commentary to the Book of Change in the title of the correct interpretation of the Book of Changes. Here is a quote from his commentary. Tai Ji is the undifferentiated primal qi before the heaven and earth were formed, when the primal qi was still intact as the one. It is also called the Great Beginning or the Great One. Hence, Dao De Jing states, Dao gave rise to one. This is Tai Ji. The Book of Changes also states that once the undifferentiated one splits, there are the heaven and earth. Hence, it is called Tai Ji gave rise to the two forms, 
This is what the Daoder Jin called one gives rise to two. The most important work in defining Taiji was done by the Northern Shung Dynasty philosopher Zhou Dunyi in his short essay, Taiji Tu Shuo. All the illustration of the Taiji diagram. Here is a quote from his essay. From Wu Ji comes Taiji. Taiji moves and the yang arises. Yang reaches its peak, then comes down. The calmness gave rise to yin. Yin reaches its bottom and triggers movement again. Now it moves, now it comes down. The movement and the calmness are the roots of each other. Yin and yang differentiate from each other and the two forms are established. Yang brings changes and yin brings closer. The movement of yin and yang gave rise to the five phases of water, fire, wood, metal, and earth. The qi of five phases take their turns to spread, leading to the transitions of the four seasons. The five phases unify yin and yang. Yin and yang unify tai ji. Tai ji is rooted in wu ji. As you can see in this paragraph, what is described here is the cosmic transformations and their dynamical patterns. This theory integrates all the key Taoist concepts such as wu ji, yin yang, the five phases, etc. This theory was further developed by the new Confucian philosophers such as the Cheng Hao and Cheng Yi brothers and the great Song philosopher Zhu Xi into a full-fledged Confucianist metaphysics. The concept of Tai Ji had finally obtained an ontological connotation. That is, it is not only representing the mental state, but also representing the Tao itself. Here is a quote from Zhu Xi's Tai Ji Tu Shuo Fu Jie, or an additional interpretation on the illustration of the Tai Ji diagram. Tai Ji is the Tao of things beyond the physical shapes. Yin and Yang are its vessels in physical shapes. Observing it in its manifestation, one sees its movements and calmness at different times. The expressions of yin and yang qualities at different phases. And Tai Ji is everywhere. Observing it in its subtleties, one dissolves his ego and obtains clarity. And the patterns of yin and yang movement unfold themselves completely. A special term is used in this passage, xing er shang, all things beyond the physical shapes. This term is often used for anything metaphysical. The Chinese term for metaphysics is xing er shang xue, or the discipline of metaphysics. This ontological connotation of tai ji from shong ming li xue or the new Confucianism is how we understand Tai Ji today. It was the Shang Dynasty philosophers, including Zhou Dunyi, the Cheng brothers, Zhu Xi, and many others, who developed a full-fledged Confucian metaphysics based on this concept of Tai Ji. I would love to talk about the metaphysics of Shang Ming Li Xie in the future if there is enough interest. The last point I would like to mention is that Tai Ji was also used to refer to Tai Ji Quan, or simply known as Tai Chi in the West. Since this video is already very long, I would save this point for my next video on philosophy. I'm Dr. Gao, a philosopher specialized in classical Chinese philosophies. I make videos about the classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, and medical literature. If you like the content of my videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on these subjects. So if you would like to read the original Chinese text with me, please contact me. 
is my email address. Thanks for watching my video. I'll see you next time. Thank you.